Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 and Tech. I'm Carlos Casanova and I'm here with my co-host Shane Carlson and Kathleen Hello. Wilson. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Great, doing thank well. you. Today we have Steve Brody with us. Welcome Steve, how are you? I'm doing great, it's great to be here. Excellent, excellent. So Steve, you know, we keep seeing you know, and reading a lot about, you know, obviously DevOps and Agile and you know, a lot of different new waves and approaches, maybe the, not so new anymore maybe. Um, but you know, one of the things obviously that that is happening is you know, the velocity at which a lot of this is happening and organizations need to accommodate it. You know, they need more automation. They obviously need to start orchestrating a lot of that. And, and that's all well and good. There's a lot of tools that are out there and have come out there. But one thing that I find interesting that, that you guys are doing is really focusing a little bit on that, on the metric side of it, because, you know, as we know, you can't really fix and improve what you, what you're not measuring. So, you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, how you're doing those metrics and how you bring that back in to really improve, um, you know, how organizations are really deploying all their, uh, their DevOps products. Sure, sure. So, you know, just kind of step back. I mean, you know, there for a long time, the big focus was on Agile and we were able to deliver software, uh, develop software faster, but there was a lot of downstream bottlenecks after you checked in the code. And that's where, you know, a lot of the focus has been on, you know, DevOps automation and orchestrating everything after the developer checks in the code through the build, the test, and the deployment all the way to production. And what you have to do to do that is you have to orchestrate a lot of the tools in that tool chain, all the testing tools, you have to go out to the cloud and provision it and so forth. And that's really where a, a lot of the focus in DevOps has recently been. How do I automate that? How do I accelerate that? But ultimately, you know, DevOps and what we do in IT is in service of the business. It's to support these digital transformation uh, initiatives. And so what it's really all about is what is the business value I'm delivering? It's not even about cycle time. We talk about speed a lot, but ultimately it's what's the business value that I'm releasing uh, out there. And so, you know, on top of the automation that we've built, we've delivered something called DevOps Insight. And with our DevOps Insight solution, we can pull metrics from all of those tools in that tool chain. And so we can pull information out of Jenkins, you know, out of uh, Jira, out of your testing tools. And we can actually show for the stories that you're actually trying to deliver in the release, what's the status of that? Uh, how is it kind of coming down the pipeline? Uh, is it ready for deployment into production and when's it coming? So no longer do I know, you know, when the, the train is going to come, I have to wait for it to arrive. I can actually look up the tracks and start getting a little bit of an early indication of what's coming down the pike and what's on, what's the payload and what's the quality of that payload. So getting back into to automation and, yeah. you know, working with the organizations that you have is where do most organizations struggle with automation? You know, there's a couple uh, areas that you see. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people will have silos of automation. So people will have functional testing tools or they may have performance testing tools. They may have CI and they may have the ability to provision in the cloud. But one thing that we see is there's a lot of manual handoffs between these silos. And that's where there's a lot of errors and a lot of slowdowns in the process. So what we find for many organizations is the ability to kind of orchestrate that software delivery pipeline like a factory floor where you're really looking at efficiency is one of the key areas. Now there's one other area which, you know, traditionally has been very manually done, which is actually the process of application deployment. Uh, traditionally that's been sort of an area where it's been manual homegrown scripts that you've woven together. And so now with the emergence of application release automation tools, you can now do sort of a model-based approach to deploying your applications into the various environments on the path to production. So it's really those two things. How do you automate um, the deployment of the application into the environments? And then how do you orchestrate all the tools in that delivery tool chain? Those are the key benefits that we see people uh, having. Now, of course, there's a lot of prerequisites and it really depends on where companies are on their journey. If they haven't really started with CI, if they haven't done continuous integration, you know, there's going to be a large degree of benefits that you get there. So you really have to meet organizations where they are on their journey. But there are certainly certain areas, specific areas where you get a high degree of value uh, by focusing on them. Yeah. So kind of tying in that conversation about value and outcomes and going back to a little bit of what you said earlier. Um, you know, I think especially as the, in DevOps, um, as is any new exciting kind of process focused uh, improvement, people jump right to the tools and they want to get into the automation, they want to get into the weeds and, the, and they get so wrapped up in the technology that sometimes they forget why they're doing something. 
Um, and, and I think, you know, the, those of us in the DevOps world over the last couple of years have been very guilty of that. You know, what are you seeing and how are you guys kind of differentiating and, and kind of bubbling up that value through the measurements and the metrics of the flow of, of, of value through these processes and kind of, I don't want to say de-emphasize the value of automation because the, the value there is tremendous, but, but how are you putting the focus back on the outcomes and, and, and how does Electric Cloud kind of help enable that? Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of this has really been driven by a lot of the customers and the prospects that we talk to. And when you start talking, you know, not just with the implementers who are doing some of this, but when you start talking with the management layer and the executive layer about what they're looking for and the reasons for DevOps, it does come back to these business metrics. And that was really the genesis of this is talking to a lot of these, you know, more senior execs and saying, let's start at the metrics level. And, you know, for us, we understand that you have to be very flexible in terms of what you do. If you start going into a larger enterprise or even a fast growing, you know, new company that's been on the scene, you know, five, 10 years, um, they have very unique requirements. And so you need a system that's pretty flexible where I can kind of tailor it. I can plug in my tools and extract information out of the tools that I'm using. I can define my own business metrics uh, along the way and kind of serve that up. So there can't really be one size fits all. Again, you know, DevOps is not prescriptive. Everyone's going to have a different set of tools. I've gone and I've talked to some organizations where they have 60 tools in their tool chain that they need to tie together. Certainly there needs to be some rationalization there, but you know, generally you're going to see 12 and 14 tools along the way. So you need to have what we call sort of an adaptive solution, a solution that really adapts to that need of, of the needs of that organization. But yeah, I mean, now we're starting to see executives. I'm hearing CIOs and CEOs even that are starting to talk about DevOps. I think they're really seeing the value of it. And it's becoming, in some cases, an existential imperative to be able to deliver business value faster to stay alive for some very large organizations. And so they have to measure the success of this. And so what's important in terms of we're taking this software innovation. This is how we're going to stay competitive with this new emergent startup out of Silicon Valley. How are we doing on delivering that value out to our customers? Yes. Excellent. So, Steve, I have another question, too. It's like, you know, you're saying that the C-levels are now asking, we want to be agile and everything else like that. But as your organization, you have to bridge that gap because you're about to move a lot of people's cheese, right? So, you know, when we're, we're talking... <clears throat> And, and I've known this, when you talk to secure infrastructure people, it's like, you know, automation to them is they're in front of, a person's in front of automation, they push a button. It's like, you know, how do, how do we start or where do we start specifically around, you know, the deployment aspect of becoming more agile? What are some of the quick wins we can focus on? Yeah. yeah can, I'll come back to, uh, you know, deployment automation. Uh, that really is one of the quick wins. And if you look at some of the analysts in terms of, you know, some of the surveys they've done of where people are getting uh, value, you know, just improving application deployment processes has a huge win. And if you survey all these customers, you know, large enterprises where they're seeing the most value from DevOps initiatives, that's one of the highest graded things. It's, it's that's number one. And then number two is, is automated testing. And if you think about it across the whole tool chain, if you're really moving fast, you check in, you know, code, you go through the CI process, you then want to deploy it into a, a test environment and run through all your, you know, functional regression tests and so forth. So you're doing deployments constantly there. So if that's a slow process, that really slows you down. And that continues throughout the whole delivery process. And so if that's a, if that's a slowdown, that's one area where you can get just extreme value. And we have customers where, They've implemented our solution, they've gone through phase one, and suddenly they're deploying 40 times as often because they've automated the process. I have one more question though. It's not, it's, it's almost as to allow you to have a shameless plug, you know, cause you've got, you know, 10, 10 DevOps uh, events coming up in October. So, you know, where would we go and find out more about some of these uh, great, you know, podcasts that you share, you know, publicly with anybody? Where could I find more information on that? Yeah. So we have a community podcast that we run. Uh, it's every two weeks. It's called C9D9. Uh, it's short for Continuous Discussions. And uh, there's a different theme every two weeks uh, around DevOps and some great topics of how do you do it with the mainframe? What are, what's the importance of metrics? So it's a great place to go. You know, even though we're the primary sponsor, it's vendor you know, neutral. Uh, it's really more of a generic thing. The other thing, uh, Electric Cloud is the co-founder of the DevOps Enterprise Summit. So we co-founded this event with uh, Gene Kim. And at this point, we think it's the largest DevOps event targeting enterprises going, trying to go through the DevOps journey. And, you know, last year we had 1,200 people in the room, you know, almost 600 enterprises that were represented. If you're really interested in DevOps, we had 50 sponsors that were there. It's the who's who of DevOps. 
And we get great feedback on this event because the presenters are the enterprises that are going through this process. And they're at different points along their journey. So if you're just getting started, you can find someone who just stuck, was there last year. What were their learnings? If you're a little bit more advanced, you can find someone that's a little bit further down that journey, four or five years. What did they go through? And as we've talked about, automation is important. Metrics is important. But ultimately, culture is one of the key things. And we can provide some of that, but there's nothing like hearing this from your peers. So going to this DevOps Enterprise Summit, there's just so much value that you'll glean there, not only learning about automation and metrics, but culture. And how do you do this in your organization? Yeah. And Steve, you know, thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting because on a lot of our recordings, uh, myself, Shane, Kathleen are the ones that usually bring up, you know, the term value and positive business outcomes. And I, I mean, I really loved hearing, you know, pretty much from the very beginning when I asked, you know, how does the metrics kind of play in, you know, instantly and then repeatedly throughout the discussion today, you know, the term value is, is sort of just a word that you're using like the and a and it and is, <laughs> uh, which is great. Because I think that's, that's the key. I think, you know, until we really, as an industry, focus almost exclusively around, is it going to deliver value or isn't it? it doesn't matter, you know, everything else doesn't really matter. And how you get there is, is obviously uh, folks like yourself and Gene, obviously, you know, and helping to deliver that value. So, uh, so thank you for bringing that out and not forcing us to have to <laughs> interject that, that term. Um, but it sounds like you got, you know, you've got some great stuff going on. Obviously, you know, Kathleen can go on for another 20 minutes on this one. <laughs> no, we we'll, <laughs> we will have to cut her off on this one. So uh, thanks for uh, joining us today. It's been, uh, it's been great. And, Definitely have to bring you back on because obviously this is uh, only kind of the, the beginning of, of what's going to be a long journey. Thank you again, really Steve. Enjoyed it. Look forward to coming back on again. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you.